Stonewall Jackson arriving. Stonewall Jackson, gold, arriving. Group six, arriving. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, arriving. Part of our ceremony will be the crew combination in which Commander Thorne will relieve Commander Stagel as commanding officer. The second part of the ceremony will be the ceremonial decommissioning of the ship. This is termed ceremonial because the actual decommissioning will take place in Bremerton, Washington. This ceremony is being conducted today to allow all our shipmates to be a part of it. Commander Frank P. Stagel. United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Stonewall Jackson. Admiral Nicholson, Admiral Kirsch, Admiral Roberts, fellow commanding officers, friends and family, thank you for sharing this day with me. I am just thrilled that so many of you could be here. I'm especially pleased to see my brother John and my sister Cookie and her husband Dave here from Chicago. It's great to see my godfather, Uncle Pete Stagel and my Aunt Nettie from Sprig Merrill, Pennsylvania and Uncle Sepp and Aunt Anna from Albion, Pennsylvania to be here too. I'm also tickled that my friend and former shipmate, Master Chief Dwayne Frost and his wife Renee are here. I'm convinced he's destined to be Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy someday. And it's really great to see so many former Stonewall Jackson shipmates here too. Just to show what a small world it is, not only uh, is Admiral Kirsch a former commanding officer of Stonewall Jackson, but uh, he's, I think, partly responsible for me being here today. When I was the young Lieutenant JG on the Alexander Hamilton, I had completed all my preparations for submarine qualification, and my commanding officer, Commander Jim Pukway, said, Stagel, go up and uh, see the deputy for an interview. Well, the, inter the deputy at that time was Commander Kirsch. I thought maybe he wanted to talk about Penn State or how I liked the Navy, but no. We went up there and um, I had my eyes shut, was rigging the control room for black, setting up the con for an approach to periscope depth, identifying the lighting configuration of the various ships that I saw out of the periscope, and calculating CPAs and bearing rates on all these contacts. At the end of that interview, I thought, well, I wonder what uh, the surface fleet, what a career in a surface fleet would be like. But anyhow, the next day, Commodore Fatola came aboard and had lunch and pinned my dolphins on. And at that time, he said, uh, Commander Kirsch was impressed with you. And the immediate thought that came to my mind was uh, he was probably impressed that uh, I'm still alive and didn't have to be reminded to breathe. <laughs> but at the end of that, uh, Commodore Fatola also told me, he said, uh, Commander Kirsch said that just because you have your dolphins doesn't mean you're done learning. 
And that has stuck with me, and I think that has really helped me throughout my career. Thank you, Admiral. Command really is the best job in the Navy. I miss the ship. I miss the position. But I already know that all of my memories will be of the people. My brother-in-law, Dave Harmoning, put his finger on it best. I asked him what impressed him the most about the recent Tiger Cruise we had just completed. I said, was it the dives and surfaces? Was it the angles and dangles? Was it the emergency blow? He said the one thing that impressed him was the teamwork. That is also my most lasting impression. Team spirit and a sense of belonging. Shared triumphs and adventures and talks about all those left at home that make this crazy lifestyle meaningful. A common goal and purpose. Those are the bonds that unite a crew and make it hard to leave. Command has been a chance to renew my faith in modern day America. A scene from a patrol flick, patrol flick comes to mind now and then in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller and his cohorts are playing hooky and trying to get seated in a posh Chicago restaurant. Mater D finally agrees to seat them, but not without the snide comment, I weep for the future. It was a funny scene, and I'm sure I didn't do it justice here, but besides being amusing, it struck a chord with me. Often in the recent past, I've wondered, where are we headed? And I'm not talking about the ship, but the country, our future. My teenage children, Jennifer and Michael, like all teenagers, <clears throat> need all the help and understanding they can get to make the difficult transition from child to adult. And yet they're the target viewing audience <clears throat> for the likes of Beavis and Butthead. Now I know I probably shouldn't expect too much out of MTV, but even the sources we've come to think is reputable sometimes give me pause for concern. Coming back from patrol, I often feel news starved. About six months ago, after returning from a Mediterranean patrol, I turned on CNN. You see, I had learned on patrol that President Clinton would be visiting Europe to discuss with the leaders of NATO whether or not some of the satellite countries of the former, former Soviet, Soviet Union would be allowed into NATO. Three years ago, who would have even guessed at such an event? So as I said, I turned on CNN and found the live coverage of the Elena Bobbitt trial. <laughs> Makes you wonder. But whenever I start to wonder if as a nation we have our collective head screwed on, I'm comforted by the fact that I've seen the future and the future is bright. That's right, I've seen the future. Now, before anybody starts to fit me for one of those nice white dinner jackets with the real long sleeves, let me explain. Throughout command, I've been literally awed by the dedication and enthusiasm of the officers and men with whom I've served. I'm not, in not talking about inspection results here. Day in and day out, the unrelenting drive and determination that I witness by those men over there humbles me. It doesn't matter what division they're in, where they're from, whether they're staying in for 20 or getting out of the Navy next week. The absolute 110% commitment to excellence is always there. It's been my greatest honor to serve as commanding officer of Stonewall Jackson Blue and to work side by side with these officers and men. It's been more than once. After witnessing the crew in action, I've gone back to my stateroom and asked myself, do I measure up? Although the Stonewall Jackson crew has been the best of the best, the opportunity to command three ships has given me some perspective. Those wonderful traits that I've described were present in each crew. 
think the real challenge of command is recognizing those natural resources that are present in these young men and then not squandering them or letting it just ooze out but channeling and focusing and multiplying this desire and enthusiasm to affect improvement. So what's all this have to do with the future? Well, a true but sad fact, and sad to me anyhow, is that over half of those men over there were born after I started my naval career. I can't honestly say that my generation had the same spirit that I see in these men. I submit to you that those young men are our future, and the future is bright, and the future is in good hands. I'd like to recognize some of the people who made this tour such a pleasure. Our executive officer, Lieutenant Commander Derek Hesse, has been the epitome of the second in command. The recommendations are always right on the mark. And he provided the kind of backup that only the absolute best XOs can. Now, XO, just because I said some nice things about you, don't think you're off the hook here, all right? <laughs> I had had my orders changed and modified several times in the last month or so. And just prior to going to sea, I received a hard copy from the detailer going to Norfolk, Squadron 6. All right. Well. Out at sea, he manufactured an amazingly accurate looking set of bogus modification of my orders, sending me to Washington, D.C. <laughs> See, this is after my wife had already bought a house in Norfolk. <laughs> so, paybacks are still coming. They just may be from afar, all right? No chief of the boat has ever cared more for his crew or worked harder for their well-being. My chief of the boat, Master Chief Harry Black, who is, by the way, the last engineman in the submarine force, is now serving on his second nuclear-powered submarine, USS Benjamin Franklin, being his first. Preceding these two nuclear submarines, Master Chief Black served on five diesel boats, legends such as Timidor, Corporal, Wahoo, Salmon, and Bonefish. He taught us the real meaning of being a submariner and made sure none of us lost sight of our true submarine heritage. Thank you, Master Chief. My department has Lieutenant Commander Darrell Cottle, Lieutenant Keith Calco, Lieutenant Gene Carlson. Always kept my six covered. They're always able to maintain the focus of the crew despite the many changes to the plan. I had the pleasure of serving with the absolute best chief quarters in the fleet. You made it happen. This crew is your legacy, and a fine legacy it is, with leaders such as Senior Chief Fred Libby, Senior Chief Tom Tribble, Senior Chief Dick Bellings, Senior Chief Alex Rodriguez, and Senior Chief Rex Griffin. Success, success was the only possible outcome. Thank you.